What's up beautiful jellyfish, it's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. Today I'm gonna to be doing a video for you guys talking all about my Omnoth EDH deck. And I was actually gonna wait until like a little bit later when I refine the deck a little bit, but I kind of sort of like love this deck like a lot and I've only played it a couple times, but it's sweet and I really want to talk about it because I'm really excited about it. So um, I also did just post uh, recently my um, uh, a couple of games featuring my deck it's really great, it's fun, it's pretty fast, which is really cool. It's a really good 1v1 deck. Um, and yeah, so I want to talk to you guys about it. Um, like I said, the deck is not 100% refined. I just want to move this back a little bit. Um, the deck is not like 100% refined into what I want it to be. I want a doubling season for the deck, an exploration, and a summer bloom. Those are a couple of cards. There's a couple more that I am just not thinking of right now, but I want to get for the deck. But as of right now, um, the deck is good. And something I like too about this deck that I will say is if you're looking for an EDH deck that's not super crazy expensive, Omnath is a really good option because my deck is actually like $70. It's really not expensive for an EDH deck. And a lot of the cards, like if you've been playing in a lot of like Battle for Zendikar and things like that, you may have a lot of these cards like just laying around. Um, The deck is relatively like not expensive. You don't need a doubling season in the deck. Like I don't have one right now and the deck is still fine, but it just does help. Like a lot of the cards really aren't. There's not like a really massive expensive card that you need. Like you need a Gaia's Cradle or like something like that. So, you know, it's, it's not like a, it's not like a deck like that which I really like and another thing too that I really like about this deck is that um you can build Omnoth in a bunch of different ways in terms of you can build it like I'm gonna go like pretty much straight sorceries and instants and not really have that many creatures because Omnoth just generates creatures basically on his own but um yeah I so basically like the point of this deck and what I'm doing is I am running quite a bit more creatures I would say than I think most deck lists that I've seen, um, it, it basically, like, I'm running actually like 30 creatures, which is quite a lot, but keep in mind that they're creatures that a lot of them are just like 1-1s and 2-2s, and they, they have like ETB effects, so it's not like I'm running like a bunch of like really big creatures, because again, Omnath just generates like tokens on its own. So of course this is a landfall theme deck, you wanna, it basically has so many different ways to generate mana, and to not only generate mana, but to have lands enter so that you get tokens with Omnath. And basically there's a couple of sack outlets, so if you blow up the board or someone else blows up the board, you can sacrifice your tokens or something, um, or like if if you just want to sacrifice your tokens, you can do that. Or like if something say to get exiled, you're like, okay, I'm gonna sack everything in response so you can deal damage that way. Um, Omnoth is a huge feature of the deck, I will say. Now, a lot of people don't like that in EDH, where your general is the primary focus, but something I will say is that you generate so much mana in this deck that if someone kills Omnoth, you can probably just recast him. Like, I've had so many instances where someone's like, I don't even know what to remove. Because, like, they're like, what are you gonna remove? Like, a 5-5 five -five token or something? Cool, it dies. It's a lightning bolt on a stick. Like, it's, it's, a diff it's a very difficult deck, I think, for a lot of other people to interact with, because board wipes just mean taking damage, basically. So it's overall just a really sweet deck. I would really recommend it if you're, like, thinking about it. It's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. I'm so glad I built this deck. Like, uh, it's my baby right now. Like, it's, it's like, my favorite, like, deck that I built in, like, a really long time. So um, we're just going to be going through everything. Um, the deck's going to be listed down below on my tab down if you want to check it out. And like I said, this is not 100%. There's still things that are being refined and yeah, just get into it. So the deck runs 30 creatures. The first creature that it runs is not an elemental, just kind of a good value creature, and that is Acidic Slime. Um, this card's fantastic. It, I basically just run it in every single, like, green EDH deck because this card's just great. Like, it's a 2-2 Death Toucher, and the fact that you get to blow something up with ADTB is, is really, really good. Um, it, it just, it, this card's just fantastic. I love Acidic Slime. Uh, this is a card from Battle for Zendikar that I'm actually testing out. Um, it's called a Coem Stonewalker. Um, the, like I said, this is just something that I'm, I'm testing out right now. I'm not 100% certain of it's going to stay in this deck. But something that I really like about this is that it's a landfall dude. And it makes tokens, and then they get sacrificed, so a creature dies, so you get a trigger with Omnoth, and you get a 3-1 out of it, which is really, really cool. So, um, I think the card's really okay. I haven't really gotten the chance to play around with it too much, so I haven't, like, officially decided what my views are on it, but it seems to be pretty okay. Um, Avenger of Zendikar. This, this card's just great. Like, Avenger of Zendikar is just, like, I think one of just my favorite like become one of my favorite cards like in the game because it's just 
so much value. Like, you generate so much mana in this deck that 7 mana is like absolutely nothing. Like, you get to 7 mana with Omnoth, you cast a Vendor Zendikar, you make plant tokens, and something I like too about this is that it's kind of like an alternate win condition, which I really like, is that, um, again, a lot of people don't like decks where you have to rely on your commander, and this deck kind of is that, but with Avenger of Zendikar, you get it, and you get plant tokens, you can just make your plant tokens so big. Like, you can, like, play Avenger of Zendikar when you've got, like, 13 lands. You get 13 plant tokens, you play another land. It's just so good. I love it in this deck. Um, I don't know actually how to officially say this. Bor Borgava? I don't know how to say it. Enraged? Um, this card is really cool. And again, I like it too. I think it's definitely an alternative win con. Like, if you if you have it on the board and say you just have, like, so many lands, it's just, like, lightning bolt on a stick and you just discard all your lands. I know some people in this version of the deck run Titania, I believe. They, they run a lot more things where lands, like, go to their graveyard. But this guy is really, really cool, and it's just, like... I, I'm excited to use him. Like, I just think he's so cool. He's used also in um, Gorio's Vengeance in Modern, and I was, like, watching Modern, and I was like, dude, this guy's so cool. I kind of want to run him, so card's really sweet. All uh, right, cool. Now we're talking about one of my favorite, um, yeah, like, basically just one of my favorite, like, mana accelerations of all time, and that's Burnished Heart. This card's great, because basically, like, you pay six mana to get two mana to the battlefield taps and you get a 2-2 out of it, which is really cool, so it's a really nice blocker or attacker if you need to, um, and I just really like this card. I think it's cool. This is a card that's actually not in the deck, and I didn't... Oh, this is basically all updated, but I don't know. Uh, Civic Wayfinder, I don't actually know what's in place of Civic Wayfinder right now. Um, probably just something that theoretically does the same thing. Um, I just realized that not everything is 100% fully updated, but like there's just a it's just a couple of cards. I don't actually remember what is in the place of this right now, but it's something similar. It, like honestly, all this deck does is actually just get mana. Like that is basically all it does. So like it's basically just get mana and like removal. So like it's theoretically something similar to this, but I don't have Civic Wayfinder in the deck right now, so that's actually wrong. But um, it's something similar to it. Uh, then we have one of my favorite cards that is basically basically the same thing as Reclamation Sage, and that is Conclave Naturalists. I love this card so much. There's awesome promo full art, which is so pretty and so sweet. Um, but basically, it's it's Rex Sage, but for th two more mana. Like it's a four four. It's just really great. Courser of Crufix. This card's awesome. Um, this card's really, really fantastic because it, what I like about, what is something that I really, really like about Corsair is that it does this really weird version of deck thinning for you because you have the top card of your library revealed and you, you can play that if, you, if it's a land, so it's like a weird version of deck thinning if that makes sense. I don't know, it's just really cool. I like Corsair a lot. Then we have Farhaven Elf and this card's just really good. You get a 1-1 one, one out of it. It's got a nice ETB. It's pretty okay. All uh, right, cool. Then we have um, Flamekin Harbinger, and this card is, um, I would say, very important if you're going the more elemental routes, which I have quite a few elementals in my deck. And this is just really good because you get any elemental that you want. Also, something to note about this card is that Avenger of Zendikar is an elemental, so if you just got like a ton of lands, you can like do this, you pay two mana, and then you get like your Avenger of Zendikar onto the, I think it's the top of your, yeah, you put your card on top of that. It's just really, really good. Uh, right, cool. Um, this card is an absolute 100% essential, I, I think, in if you're running green VDH, and that is uh, Green Warden of Marassa. I was talking about this recently in a video, but it's essentially double Ewit. And let's be real here, Eternal Witness is just absolutely fantastic. This is really cool too because it's an elemental, so it dies. So if you have Omnoth out, you get like two triggers in a sense because you get three damage and you also get something back from your graveyard, which is just really, really good. This card is just absolutely fantastic. It's like become one of my favorite cards in the game. Then we have um, Incandescent Soulstoke, and this is a card that I'm not sure about at the moment, um, because it... I don't know if I have enough elementals for this to work, but I do like it because if you are running the more, like, if you're running more elementals in your list, it, um, it gets sacrificed, which is really cool, especially if you have, like, an ETB effect or something, like, if you have the, the, the Flamekin Harbinger card or whatever, or, actually, this synergy is really well with Green Warden because it gets sacrificed. Wow, I just realized the synergy in that. That's really cool. Um, it gets sacrificed if you've got on math out, it's Lightning Bolt, and then you, um, it, when it dies, you get something, so it's just really, really cool, and you can basically cheat out really big stuff for two mana a lot of times, you don't even care if it dies, so just really good. Um, this is especially really cool to do if, 
someone blows up the board and you can in response tap it, destroy something because it's going to get sacrificed anyway. And if it has an ETB effect or like something like that, you can do that. So I think it's really cool. And like I said, you cheat out big things for two mana. And though they get sacrificed, you don't really care. This is a card that I really, really like in this deck, and that is Magma. And I've seen this card do amazing work because a lot of times, like, what'll happen in this deck is that you'll you'll have, like, nothing to do with your mana, and you're all just like, what do I do? And you just got, like, all these lands and, like, dudes. And then, like, Magma's really cool because, again, if someone goes to blow everything up, you can sacrifice them and you get a little bit more value out of them, which is really cool. And you're controlling when they die, which is really awesome. So, or someone goes to exile something, you can just sacrifice it, which is really cool. Then we have Malignus, and this is a card that I'm on kind of sort of the fence about keeping. I haven't really gotten the chance to play around with it yet. Um, but basically, it's just like really cool. It's just like a really big dude, and it's got like it just damage can't be prevented on it, which is really fantastic. So the card is like pretty okay, and it could potentially be like really, really big. So then we have um new card from uh, Oath of the Gatewatch that just came out that a lot of people have been talking about running in their list, and that is uh, Mina and Dan Wildborn. And this card is like a really, really cool version of um uh the the or is it Oracle? I think it's the, I think it's Oracle, which by the way needs to be in the, this deck as well. But this card's really cool because it's like Slab Hammer on a creature, which I actually have Slab Hammer in here, but it's not it's not on here. But um, that was one of the cards that I just didn't get the chance to update. But it's really really cool because you get to play an additional land and you can return lands, and then you want landfall triggers with Amna. So if, say you're in a situation where you just have no lands, you can bounce them back with them, which is really really cool. So. Um, and I like how you can do it multiple, multiple times. And it's like 4 mana for a 4-4, four, four, which is just like really good value. So the card's really sweet. Alright, uh, cool. And this is another card that I have really not gotten the chance to play on with yet, but it is um, Molima, Marrow Sorcerer. And basically, like, it's just a really, really big dude with Trample. That's basically how I'm going to sum it up. That's what it is. Alright, uh, um, Pilgrim's Eye is another card that's no longer in the deck. Um, Perforos. Perforos is really, really good. You don't really care about Perforos being a creature, but something that is really, really sweet with Perforos is that if you have Omnath out, you've got three devotion already, which is just really cool. So, um, however, and another thing too that's really good about Perforos is that, um, the buff that you get where you can pump your team for plus one, plus zero, which is really, really cool, especially again, if you have nothing to do with your mana, which happens a lot of times. So it's basically just like every turn or every time you just make dudes like it's like, so, again, so much synergy because you play a land, trigger Omnath, trigger Perforos, like there's just a lot of triggers to like, keep track of, but it's just really, really cool. Uh, Reclamation Sage, I don't really need to explain it, it's just an earlier card, it's one of like the best things that you can be doing in green. Uh, Rebel Hulk, another one that I'm kind of on the fence about keeping. Um, it just kind of doesn't really do anything. It's just kind of like a big dude, and I mean, I theoretically could give it trample with like uh, Mina and Den Wildborn, but I mean, I don't know. Or I could like blood rush something and then make something really big, but I don't know. I feel like it's a lot of mana for what it is, so I'm probably gonna take it out. Uh, Sakura Tribuilder, one of like my favorite green ramp cards. I talked about it recently. It's a great card. Scoop Mob. Uh, yeah, this card's really good. I like it. You just just make like a really really big dude for one mana. It's like so good. This is like like turn one ideal play like. Such a good card. Then we have um Skull Mulcher, and this is a card that I really, really, really want to try out because you like devour things, and a lot of times, you know, some of these things have ETB effects or whatever, so if they go to the graveyard, you don't really care, and then you get to draw cards off of them. So it just seems really, really cool. So I'm, I really want to see how this works out. Smoke Braider. This card's fantastic. I just talked about this recently in Friday's Future Cards. This card's fantastic because it's like a better version of like a mana dork. It's like the elemental mana dork because it's two mana, it's a combination of any colors. It's just absolutely incredible. Such a good card. Uh, Solemn Simulacrum. This card is awesome. Um, basically an essential EDH staple for me. Really, really good card. Uh, Soul Bright Flamekin. This is another card that I'm on the fence about keeping. It's funny, a lot of the elementals I'm just like hesitant about about keeping in, but um, I've seen this card do pretty okay. You know, you, you get to generate like a lot of, have a lot of red mana in your pool, but I don't know. I mean, I guess it's like really good if you if you really need to make something with Trample, but I, I guess I'd just rather have like a global enchantment that says that, but I don't know, it's just me. I'm, I'm on the fence. 
Uh, a card that I haven't really gotten the chance to play around with, um, Spite Bellows. Uh, this card's really good because you can evoke it for three mana, which is really good. You get an Omnoth, you get a uh, an elemental dying with Omnoth, which is really great, and then you get to do an additional six damage to our creature. It's just really good. Undergrowth Champion, a card that I haven't played with yet. I haven't played around with this card yet, and um, I can't really speak for it in terms of how it how it has worked because I, I just haven't gotten a chance to play with it. But it seems okay. And one of my favorite cards, um, Yavimaya Elder. This card is really, really fantastic because you, um, you, you can like make it die, and then you can draw a card, and then you um, get two lands to your hand. So it's just really good value. Cool. That's it for the creatures. Now we're gonna talk about sorceries. The first one is Blasphemous Act. This is kind of like a red EDH staple for me. If I'm running red in EDH, I'm running a Blasphemous Act. Um, it basically kills everything for one mana. It's like really, really good. Um, Boundless Realms. I think that if I ever cast a Boundless Realms and I have Omnath out, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's game, because that's just like a lot of dudes. Boundless Realms is just like absolutely incredible in a second, I really want to play around with it. Uh, then the deck runs Cultivate, and Cultivate is just, again, a really good EDH, uh, EDH green staple, I like it. Explore. I like this card a lot. I like it. It's card advantage, and it it's just really good. I like it. Explosive Vegetation. A lot of these cards are like so like, I feel like very simple, and like I don't really need to explain a lot of them, um, because they all like, all, these cards just do all of like the same thing basically, so Explosive Vegetation is really good. Uh, Fade Into Antiquity is one of my favorite green removal spells because it's exile, and a lot of times people will just have enchantments that you just, or artifacts that are indestructible or whatever, and you just can't get around them, but the fact that you can exile them is just really, really good, so I like Fade Into Antiquity. Uh, Kadama's Reach, same thing as uh, Cultivate, this card's really good. Nisa, Nissa's Pilgrimage, um, I have yet to get Spell Mastery off of this, I'm like, this is one that I'm on the fence about keeping it, keeping in, but I'm not really sure. Rampant Growth, really good. Seek the Horizon is actually one that I, I took out for, I don't even remember, it starts with a P and I can't remember what it's called, but it's the same thing, but you get to scry one. I think it's like you search for two lands and you get to scry one, so that's cool. Um, Seek the Wild, I really like this card a lot because it's really good in the early game when you really need lands, but it's really good in the late game when you're just kind of like digging through and you really want to find a creature or something, so I think the card's really good and very versatile. Uh, uh, sh uh, Shamanic Revelation. This card's really, really sweet, and I really have yet to cast it, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's basically, like, a really, really good thing. Like, you just get to draw a lot of cards, and then you just get to gain a bunch of life. So, seems really good. This card I actually discovered, and I have never seen this card before until recently, but I think someone was talking about it, I don't even remember, but, um, Sky Shroud Claim is basically like a better version of Explosive Vegetation. However, keep in mind it only does get forests, but a lot of times in this deck, like my deck is mostly green heavy, so I don't even really care about them, but they come in untapped, which is amazing. Um, Sylvan Scrying, um, I think this card is really, really important because in this deck because it's any land card, and the deck doesn't run a lot of fancy lands because when you keep in mind the, the cards that you're getting, you're getting a lot of like basic lands, so you don't want to run like too many, which is kind of like my segue into talking about my lands. I run 38 in the deck, and um, I think that that has been fine with me. I've never run into an instance where I've gotten like, oh my gosh, I ran out of all the lands in my deck. I've never gotten into an instance yet of that happening, but um, the deck doesn't run, like I said, a lot of fancy lands because you need your basics, because the majority of your spells are going to get you basics. So I run Wood Blighted Woodland. This is usually what I get with myself in Scrying, because right now I just don't have anything that's just better. But Blighted Woodland is just absolutely incredible. Um, you, It's basically like explosive vegetation on a land, and it's really good if you have Omnath out. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, Evolving Wilds, really, really fantastic. Same thing as Timorphic Expanse, which is also in here. Um, you get double landfall triggers, just really good. I also need the um, red green fetch, that's something that's on my list here. Um, Fertile Thicket is a really good way of just getting, like, thinning through your deck a little bit and just kind of, um, you know, just kind of like searching through cards or whatever and getting a land, especially in the early game if you, like, don't have a lot of lands, which sounds surprising, but it actually can happen. <laughs> Um, the deck runs 18 forests and 15 mountains, and one gruel turf, again, for that double uh, landfall trigger. The deck runs two instants right now. Um, 
which I'm honestly hesitant about keeping both of them in and I kind of thought like this whole thing as I was like oh man I would do this cool thing where I would like really want to cast instants so that I could get instant five fives and whatever and I've just found that it, I don't really think I need to do that I don't think it's something that the deck really needs to do so also these are a lot of mana for what they are because they are instant speed you basically put a land onto the battlefield um I have natural connection and um I have swell of growth and now that I'm looking at it Oh, okay, I guess I see, yeah. None, none of the, the both of those are not fantastic. They're not bad, but they're just not, like, that great. And something in this deck that, that you'll find is, if you're building it, like, what, how much mana are you paying for each of the, like, the, the ramp spells? So, like, you look at it and you say, well, for, for Natural Connection, I'm paying three mana to get one land. It's a basic land that it goes to the battlefield tap. It's really not that great compared to, like, a better card, which would be, like, you know, Sylvan Scrying, which is one less mana, and it's any land. And, you know, it's just, it's just better. So, I think the, the instants are just something that are, are going to be cut. We're going to be talking about enchantments. I actually have quite a few enchantments in here. I have uh, nine right now. I think I may even have like one more or something um, that I didn't add on here. But the first one that I have is Beastmaster Ascension. And this card is basically like one of like my favorite green cards like to run if you're running like this very um, like creature heavy deck where you're constantly swinging. Because this once this goes off... Like, if you have seven counters on it, your creatures immediately get plus five, plus five. So if you attack with seven creatures, they immediately get plus five, plus five, which is just absolutely great. So those five fives become ten tens, and that's really, really scary for people to deal with. This is a card that I am very hesitant about keeping in, and I am not sure, and I'm pretty certain that I'm going to take it out, and that is Evolutionary Leap. And I really, like, I remember when I first saw this card, I was like, this card's bad. I'm not gonna run this in anything. And then I saw, um, I was watching someone's game, and they were, like, playing online, and they had Evolutionary Leap, and it was doing such good work. And I was like, oh, maybe I should throw the card in the deck, and I haven't gotten the chance to play around with it yet, but I don't know thus far. I'm really, I'm really not sure about, about it. Like, I, I feel like a lot of my creatures are, are good, but, like, it's not like I'm doing, like, the, oh, let me sacrifice something, and then oh, look, Kozilek, or, like, you know, Big Eldrazi, or, like, something like that. I'm not really doing that. A lot of my creatures are, are good, but, like, they're not, like, I really want to sacrifice them. And, I mean, I guess it's really good if there is a board wipe, but I don't, I don't know. I'm just, mm, I don't know. Um, exploration, like I said, I, I don't actually have that. I don't know why it's on my list. I don't, I didn't actually buy it yet, but I will. Um, uh, Fervor is in the deck, and... Yeah, Fervor is just really, really sweet. It's like creatures you control of haste. It's just really good. Um, I need actually another card in here that says creatures you control of haste because like I just it's so good. Okay, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite cards in this entire game that like no one plays, and this card is incredible, and that is Goblin Bombardment. You cannot even I can't even tell you like how great this card is because like it's it it people just don't know how to deal with it because they're like oh man, I'm gonna blow everything up. And I'm like, really? That's that's a nice story. Oh, I'm gonna exile everything. That's a very lovely story. I'm gonna sack my entire field to deal, you know, you one damage. Or you can redirect it to um, other creatures, which is really awesome. So this card is just fantastic. You don't have to pay anything for it. Like, I can't even tell you how many instances this has been, like, super helpful. So, or someone goes to kill something and then you just sack it in response and, you know, you get the chance to do an extra damage somewhere. So it's really good. Impact Tremors. This is one of the most annoying cards I think in EDH because it's just like, it's like a mini Perforos on an enchantment. It's just like super sweet because you play it and then it's like every time you make a dude, every time you play a land, I'm not this out, you get a token and then it does one damage and just, it just keeps going on and on. This deck only like does like two things. I, I like jokingly said that this deck runs like two cards, I feel, because it just, it do all the cards do the same thing basically, but it does it really well and it synergizes well. Parallel Lives is a pretty big essential in this deck, essential card in this deck. Um, one of the more expensive cards, I would say. A lot of the cards have been relatively cheap up to this point, but this is one of the cards, like a $6 card, but I think it's really, really important because you get creature, you get like double tokens. Like, who wants to deal with that? Like, that's just really, really good. Uh, these two cards are similar, and actually just talked about them recently, but I have a War Storm Surge and Wear Ancients Tread. These are really, really incredible, because basically any time you play creatures, it just deals damage. It's just absolutely great. And you don't care about the fact that they're 6 mana. You don't care at all, because they're 5-6 mana, because you just generate so much mana in this deck. Alright, uh, cool. And then we're going to talk about um, some artifacts in the deck. So the first one is um, Armorelli Sphere, and... 
That and Traveler's Amulet are two that I'm hesitant about in this deck because I think that there's a lot of better options. So those are cards that I'm probably going to cut in the future. Just because, like, you know, the advantage of those in, like, a multicolor deck or a deck that doesn't have green, which doesn't have access to great mana ramp, um, those cards are really, really good. But in this deck, I, a lot of times, like, when you look at Armorly Sphere, it's like you pay four mana to get two lands to your hand, where other cards are just better. Like, like looking at Explosive Vegetation, like you'd rather just have four mana to just do that. But um, it's really good in the early game when you really, really need mana, and you really need to find those answers. But like I said, the deck runs 38 lands. It really usually does not have a problem. Like, if, if you're, like, mana screwed in this game, like, it is saying something. Because even if you draw lands, like, late game, you don't even care because it's just more triggers for Omnoth, or you're closer to casting Omnoth, so... Um, this card is really cool, and I've I found it to be pretty useful since I have it thus far, and that is um, Seer Sundial. I've been wanting a lot of card draw in this deck because you kind of just need card draw, I think. I, I, you know, I think that's something that this deck can potentially be lacking because a lot of times you dump your hand, so I've been trying to find ways of getting card draw, and I think this card is a really, really important staple in this deck because you get so much landfall triggers and if you have nothing else to do with your mana you can just pay two mana of any color and you get to draw a card. It's just really really good. Soul Ring. ZDH we run Soul Ring, you know. Um, I have Staff of Nin in this deck? Why am I totally forgetting that I put this in this deck? Maybe I've just never drawn it. Um, Staff of Nin is one of my favorite cards. A lot of people complain that it's six mana. However, I think this card's great. Um, it's basically a pinger every turn. It kills a lot of stuff that's got, you know, one toughness, which is really good, or it's just, you know, a constant, like, ping to a player. And the fact that you get to just draw a card, uh, you know, a, a free card, basically. Um, and again, six mana, you don't care. It's a great card. Swiftfoot Boots. Um, this is EDH. Again, we run Swiftfoot Boots. Really, really good to equip to Omnoth so that people can't target him. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, you know, there are a couple of cards that I'm looking to exchange, but um, that's basically the general gist of the deck right now, and this deck is sweet. I, if you're thinking of building it, I would definitely suggest it. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Omnoth is really popular, and, like, I don't want to do it, and I, like, completely understand that. Like, I know when, when the, the event decks came out, um, I don't think they, they weren't this most recent event deck. I think they were the ones, the commander ones that came out last, not the event decks. Uh, yeah, no, maybe they were. I don't remember. The ones that came out last year, um, everyone and their mother built a Dreddy deck, and Everyone was sick of seeing Doretti because everyone built one. So it was like, I felt kind of like that. Like, I would feel like I was very, like, late to the party. But as soon as I saw Omnath, I was like, I'm going to make a deck around that. And, like, everyone else did. And I was like, oh, okay, I was going to make that deck before it was cool. I'm trying not to be a hipster. But I did think about it as it came out. I was like, I'm going to build that. And then so many other people did. And, you know, it just kind of took me a bit to, like, collect the pieces for it. But, um, yeah. Um... Yeah, guys, that was it. Um, like I said, there's a couple cards, too, that are, like, not officially edited on here. There's, oh, there's some um, Slab Hammer that's in the deck. That card's sweet. Like, it's basically, like, you get to bounce a land, and what I really like about it is that it's a May ability, so you don't have to do it. And it, the, something at plus two, plus two, which is just really, really good. I want to put a Nylea in this deck as well, because, like, what's better than five fives? It's just five fives with Trample. Like, that just seems really sweet. So, uh, and the fact that you can potentially pump you know, Nylea's, like, her her thing is, is pumping is not, like, super great, but, you know, um, as of, like, right now, like, this deck functions well, like, there's a couple cards that I'm not happy with, but the deck still is, like, just super, super fun, and, um, I think that it, something that I like about this deck, though, is, like I said, I think that a lot of times, like, you'll, someone will kill your commander, and you're like, oh, man, you kill my commander, now I can't do all my cool things, but with Omnoth, if you kill him, you're just like, cool, I'm just gonna recast him, because you just generate so much mana in this deck. The deck just never stops generating mana. Like, that's just something you just never stop doing, so. Um, Alright guys, I will leave you here, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day session, and I'll talk to you later.